Now, to those statues found in Egyptian tombs, I've made a sketch of a very famous one. Have you ever seen it? It's green with age. Take a look at it here. Here we see a cat statue made thousands and thousands of years ago. Look at the beautiful shape here. Made out of bronze and in some cases other materials too. This cat was one of the short-haired variety. And note that his tail is tucked around the base of his legs. Look closely and see the golden earrings in his ears. As I say, made of bronze and other materials and very, very fine details here too. A real good sculpture of a cat, a cat. Are you ready? Now in step one, two, and three, you'll see how easy it is. So if you have a black crayon or pencil or pen or whatever, look, I'm going to draw him sort of crouching down in a very distinctive cat pose. So let's use this part of our pad right here so we'll have room. And I'm going to draw a circle here. Now it's going to be a fairly large circle, which will be the main part of his body. You see where the, my fingers are? Well, now watch. Here, 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 here. Now I'm drawing lightly so that we can go over and correct lines as we go too. Now that's just one circle. And watch what I do next. There's one circle. Here is another circle. There, down, like that. But you'll notice that, of course, this circle is smaller than this one. Let me explain as you draw. This will be the main body. This will be the chest area. He's facing toward us in that angle. And so we have one large circle, one smaller circle, and we need one more. Step one, step two, and step three. Are you ready for three? All right, now watch where this goes, for it's going to be just about level with this circle. In other words, it's going to start there. But it's going to be even smaller. Now watch, around, over, and down. Now look at the proportions here. One again for the main part of his body, no legs showing, the chest area, and this of course will be his head. So look at my drawing and yours and see if you can get those proportions down, the circles in these sizes. That's the way to do it. Now watch what I do right here. I'm going to draw one line and one line with a little curve to it and you see it's an ear without detail, but positioning it. Now, if the cat's face were facing right ahead, we'd see another ear the same way on the opposite side. But because he's looking that way, maybe at a mouse over there, watch what happens to this ear. One straight line, a light one. And then the back of his ear would be shown in perspective, wouldn't it? But we would also see the open part of the ear there. Now, while I've drawn the open part of the ear here, why don't we do it here? Look at this ear. It's a different line, and it goes like this. Starts, comes down that way. Now we can actually see in our mind's eye inside the ear. And there will be hairs there, too. And there will be hairs there, too. All right, now, let's pay strict attention to the head. For now, we want to get just where those eyes are located. And this is very, very important. In order to locate the eyes, we must, again in our mind's eye, create the skull of the cat. Now, if it comes down that way, over the front of the forehead, and then moves out this way, here to about halfway through the circle, we'll have the line of the forehead and down to the muzzle or nose. That means that one eye will be here and the other one will be there. But let's locate them first as far as height goes. Again, look at halfway through the circle. You see, halfway up, and move a little bit above halfway and do this, and watch where it goes. Right there, a light line. You see, it's between the ear and the muzzle, almost on that line, and it crosses this circle, right here, if the circle is in the right spot. Now, cat's eyes are not just round circles. No, the eyeball itself is, but let's carefully draw in the size and shape of the opening for the eye. You know how cats are said to have almond or slanting eyes? That's why, because of the opening. But the pupil itself, the eyeball itself, is round. The pupil, of course, is a little different shape. But here again, there is that eye. Now how about the other one? Well, we come right up the muzzle here, and we find from this point up, we can draw this line, you see, but it's in a different perspective. There it is there. Good, and now, Let's bring this line down again. Here, 
to match that one. Now we can see that the eyes are indeed looking that away. Right? Right they are. For detail in the eye, let's draw this line in a little heavier. For that shows the thickness of the lid and the shadow under it. Taper that shadow in this way. And now watch. One circle there, you see just part of the circle, and we begin to see what will be the pupil of the eye. The eyeball itself and the pupil. See, it's a slanted pupil. Sometime I'm going to tell you what makes a, a cat's eyes dilate, move up and down and open. They're very, very sensitive to light. Now let's get the other pupil in. Look closely. Here, just about halfway. Put it in like that, and the cat is already beginning to look at us. The next thing in order would be that nose, and we've established how the line comes down to it, haven't we? Have you ever looked at a cat's nose close to? All members of the cat family have different size noses, but they're all alike. If you draw a little upside down, well, no, let's call it a little diamond. Can you see that? And then one nostril on this side, coming down to the point, with a separation between the two, and note that I'm curving it, too. That's it. And then over here, the other nostril, and curve that line down. While we're right here, I'm going to take a red crayon. If you don't have one, it's all right, but I want to get the little pink color into this fellow. We'll draw a Siamese cat here, one of the short-haired varieties. We'll see more about him, too, as the program goes on. Now what I've done is just put a little pink color to that. I'll strengthen and color in the nostril, detail on the nose. And now watch. Right here, I'm going to increase the heaviness of that line coming down to send his nose out, curving down and then coming out just a little bit in that fashion. Now let's work on the shape of the head. First off, over here, we can show some jagged lines denoting short hair. And curve it down to about that base there with short lines. And then, strangely enough, we're going to draw an opposite curve. You see, that doesn't look like the jar of a cat at all there, but that's just the proportion. So, from this point, just beyond the eye, I'm going to make a curve, and this is important, to allow enough room for the jaw and chin. Curve it down to about there to start. Now we can see the base of that jaw, but that's the lower jaw. Watch what happens now when I draw a short line from the nose here to this important line. One there, and a shorter one here. And when I've established the shorter one, watch what happens. The curve of the nose to that top lip. And then, this top lip curves in here. You see that? And a few lines denoting where it goes into the face. Then the bottom jaw comes down to that point, and we can continue it. Now we begin to see this is indeed a cat's face with the jowls. Watch here now. A little separation of line, which as we go along in our steps, we'll see is the pattern of color on our cat. Can you see that? Just indicated in that manner. Up over the eye and down toward the nose and on the other side. Now for the head itself, I'm going to indicate that separation of the forehead. Then I'm going to go across here to that line and start to put in the detail on the ear, going over our sketched line again when we're sure that that's what we want. And then I'll bring out the forehead of the cat here and down and thicken up over that eye. Now we begin to see the other side of his face. And we can bring that line down, out again, and in. You see how simply that's done? And yet every line that we add makes it look more like a cat. This ear now, and we've got just about all the proportions we need for his head. And we'll be working on the body too. Are you getting those proportions down in the right order? Well, I surely hope so. Do you see how easy it is? I hope that too. Now we'll be back to our sketch in just a short while and I'll show you a little known fact about a cat's tongue. And we'll see some of the different breeds too. But right now, you watch this.